Most people listen to podcasts to learn something, to be entertained and to walk away feeling inspired, perhaps even educated a bit. Hello, I'm Devo and I'm one of the two hosts of our show, The Little Impolite Podcast. Welcome and thanks for listening. This show is for the expansive, open-minded creative whose persistent curiosity towards integrating new information in their lives never stops. Think of it as the free thinkers toolkit for anyone that refuses to enroll in the conformity of all of those around them, instead forging their own paths with fortitude and love. It's that slightly unapologetic conversation with that new friend you just met that sort of wistfully and effortlessly pushes the conversation into spaces that you never expected. It's the deep-hearted conversations with purposeful and thoughtful individuals that have finally figured out their superpowers and are now pouring into it with gusto and love. We're delighted to host these conversations with you that lead us down the conversation well. But watch your step, because most of our guests, and of course, Lisa and I, are a little impolite. Good afternoon, evening, morning, middle of the night, wherever you are, whenever you are listening to the Little Impolite podcast. We're excited that you've joined Lisa and I today. We just finished recording a fantastic guest that I've had a couple of conversations with prior to the podcast and was just intrigued by his mind, uh, not just around podcasting, which we're going to talk about in a second, but just sort of his general ideation around all things business, life, creativity, and his general zest and fervor for truly living his best life. We had Adam Adams, better known as AAA. And you're going to learn why he has the nickname AAA outside of the two A's we just referenced. The third will come into the storyline as well. But Adam is a podcaster, and he also runs a podcast resource consulting service called growyourshow.com. And he helps people like Lisa and I, which he just did, right, Lisa? Mm, he drops so much knowledge on us. <laughs> we, it's like we, we're taking notes the whole time. <laughs> I'm always amazed at every guest that we bring on. I feel like I know a few things. I've been around the block a few times. That's what she said. And every single time I leave the show, I'm like, holy fuck, that person is way smarter than I am on so many different things. And it really dawned on me a few weeks ago when our wonderful business coach was telling us that we needed to focus more on our podcast and really hone in on more of a targeted theme. And we've been struggling with that because there's a bazillion photography podcasts and a bazillion branding podcasts and a bazillion business podcasts. And we didn't really want to just do one more of those because while we might have a unique take on all of that, most of it is just recycled content as is everyone else's. So we've taken a different pathway on our podcast, haven't we? Yeah. Which is really just centered around bringing on people like AAA and we had a sex therapist on last week and other people who are just doing brilliant things along the planet. Mm -hmm. And that, that sort of is our modality. They're conversations mm -hmm. with fascinating people doing fascinating things to make the planet a little bit better place for all of mm -hmm. us as business mm -hmm. owners, as humans, as parents, as lovers, as partners. And, and that's kind of what we're honing in on. And, and Adam Adams was no different than any of the other guests that we've had. Mm -hmm. And we talked about a lot of different things that even though he's um, mainly talking about his business, it's not really mainly his business. It's not just, you don't have to be a podcaster to listen to this podcast, do you? He's talking about generally life and business and all things and how to show up. Um, there's a lot of takeaways from this. Um, we learn about who's a polygamist, who's a CrossFit pariah, Devo, who has a fear of tattoos, what and when we should start promoting things, whether it's a podcast or anything in business or on social media, um, and what the two things that a podcast definitely needs for success I want to talk about that, what a, a show needs, because we really dove into a pre-launch, which is not something we've really ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. We just sort of, in our excitement to get something out there, we just throw it out there. Um, but we could all be a little bit more purposeful and strategic around everything we do. 
which is kind of funny because we teach our clients to do that. And yet sometimes we don't take our own advice. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the whole idea of the pre-launch, but what I think I was really um, most intrigued with, and I think I want to bring them back on is if you're not in the pre-launch phase, which we are not, whether you're in your business or your podcast, what are some of the things that, you know, he would recommend when you're, when you're already up and running and you're well into the heart and bread of your, of your podcast or your business. And, I, and, and one of the things that I was sort of, I guess one of the things that I was sort of drawn to is he, he was very engineer specific in terms of still being creative, but being very systematic about everything. And I think that's something that could be a good takeaway for me specifically in my business and my operations. You know, you're exactly right. Those two words, creative and systematic, because it was like opening up one of those Russian dolls. He would knock off one and then there'd be another. This is leading to another. This is leading to another. And there, it, it made so much sense, but I had never thought of the process in that way. So he really, really honed in on that. He also honed in a couple of things that I didn't realize that had slipped past us as well as far as a, a really great algorithm hack for anyone. It doesn't have to just be podcasting. It can be for anything that you're trying to get out there on your on your social media. That was really helpful. And he had some really great, like three great keys to business that he has put into all of his businesses. And that's why they've been so successful. Yeah. So during the podcast now, you've dropped polyamory, you've talked about CrossFit, and now you just dropped a Matryoshka reference. I don't know if polygamy is polyamory. Aren't I think the they're... Thing? No. No, babe. Are you sure about that? Well, why don't we ask our viewers? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking it's different, and maybe that was my background, but huh. polyamory is more like open, is it not? And polygamy is like there's a patriarch with a bunch of women, wives doing different jobs. And if I was in that situation, I would want to be able to call out which job was mine. I don't think I'd want the bearing children or the cleaning or anything like that. Could I be the one that just like hangs out in gardens when I want to. Would you be useful in the in the cult if you were? If that all you're doing is gardening, you're just creating flowers and plants for us? For us plebes that are part of the concubine? You wouldn't be part of the concubine. You're a man. You would have your own concubine. Are, are there such a thing as polyamory female harems? I don't know. We should look into that, and we should ask our viewers too. Inquiring Here's minds want to know. All right, so if you want to learn what a matryoshka is, <laughs> the Russian dolls stacked inside of each other, or if you want to learn about polyamory, polygamy, CrossFit, and the story of the little five-foot woman who had the tire fall on top of her and why I am a pariah in the CrossFit community, then you need to tune into this podcast and listen. But if you're also interested in learning about how to pre-launch a podcast for success, beat the podcast algorithm on Spotify and Apple, then Adam Adams is your man to go to. AAA is going to drop some knowledge in this show today and give us some insider knowledge and insider tips on how we can all have a better viewed and better heard podcast. So stay tuned for that. Anything else you want to drop? Because I know you always uh, have more. There's stuff. a bunch more. First of all, if you're new to us, thank you for joining us. We know that you have a busy life and a lot of things to take up your time. So we're glad you're taking up your time with us. Uh, you can follow Devo on social media. He's an interesting feed at Fusion Photog. And you can follow me at Lisa Staff Photo. But even better, Devo has created something because he's a giver. He's very altruistic and he's put together a free download that'll be in our notes here. Um, because we all struggle with social media and keeping a healthy balance with that and our life and all the other responsibilities that we have and trying to make sure that what what we're putting into it isn't taking up all of our time and it's having a benefit and making an impact. So he has a, a fantastic download that he's put together, a healthy relationship with social media. Um, we would love to share that with you. So check out our downloads. And as well, we have something really exciting. By the time this podcast um, hits the air, it will already have launched. Um, Adam Adams helped us get some more ideas together behind it today, but um, we're opening up something that we've been talking and dreaming about for a long time, and we've put put it out there in the universe, and it's called Photography House. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Devo? Yeah, I'm excited as well. We're launching Photography House in Savannah on July 11th, and it's open to only eight photographers. 
um, that are interested in connecting with other like-minded business professionals like themselves and looking for something a little more than just a traditional photography workshop with a hundred other photographers vying and fighting for model model time in the in the stylized shoot. Um, we are we have rented out a massive 18 18th century or 19th century Victorian mansion in the heart of downtown Savannah. In fact, it's it's registered as a historic home, um, and we are going to lock your asses up for three nights, four days, and we are going to bombard you with branding education and marketing education, uh, all things business. We have two guest speakers coming in, um, and in addition to that, we have four stylized photo shoots throughout Savannah, a night shoot, a wedding and an engagement session, and... Da, 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 a boudoir session in the 18th, 19th. I always get the 18th century because it's, it's 1800s, but you have to say mm -hmm. 19th century. I always got confused on that. So we're not going to be talking about mathematics around century yeah. technology, though. Okay. But anyhow, join us for this because it is going to be a brilliant weekend. It's all inclusive. All of your expenses are paid. Um, well, you're paying, but all of your items, your food, your beverages, everything will be part of this. And we're just going to bombard you with information. And when you leave, this 19th century Victorian house in Savannah, you will have spent the last four days with seven other photographers and yours and myself, Lisa, truly, and formed a mastermind that will have a continuous and congruous program for the rest of the year. So lots of cool things happening. Yeah, I think a lot of times as a small business owner, you feel a little bit lost or you're pouring into your clients and you're never filling up your own bucket. And this is something that we've found that we've needed and tried to find elsewhere and have always been lost in the masses of too many people to get that one-on-one. -on -one. So this is giving you the one-on-one -on -one that feeds your business mind and intellect, your creative magistry, and um, your soul as well. And then you're making those connections and it's not getting lost in the crowd. So I'm really excited about this. Well, here's my take on it. It's tough running your own business, mm -hmm. especially if you're a solopreneur and you don't have a team. And especially if you're not doing anything to get out in the community and network. And if you are new to photography, you, you know, it, it's, it, it can sort of be intimidating and overwhelming to ask a lot of questions that you might feel like you should probably already know. And so the point of this workshop is not for us to lecture at you, but it's to convene and converse with you and seven other photographers and have conversations around a campfire. Literally, we'll be sitting around a campfire at night talking about best practices and things that we struggle with and life and business and branding. And who knows where the conversation will go down the metaphorical rabbit hole. But the point is, is to bring together people who are interested in growing their business and growing their life and improving where they are uh, and perhaps creating a different version of themselves than they had, than they had originally set out for who knows what you might discover, but if there's one piece of advice I can offer anyone I have learned through this is that my biggest growth has come from connecting with other people mm -hmm. who know mm -hmm. more than I do and learning from them. That's why there's such a thing as mentors and apprentices mm -hmm. and all those sorts of things. So we hope that this will be your photography business incubator and the friends and connections that you'll make through this workshop will undoubtedly last for much longer than just the four days. And I really personally can't wait to get this thing going. Yeah. And I think too, like there's only so much you can learn from Google. There yeah. needs to be, you know, and we do that. We learn from Google, but this needs to be something that's hands-on connecting and being immersed. So we're really excited about this. And it's not just for a seasoned photographer that's been in the business for a decade. It can be for anyone in between that needs that improvement. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a good point to make. It, it, it's for anybody who's looking to grow their brand and anybody looking to in, increase what they're doing in their business. Please? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I mean, that was a cliffhanger. It suddenly paused on me for a minute. So I wasn't sure what happened. Hello? I never know with technology. Like, there's always something frozen or something in the Zooms these days. So, um, anyhow, that's all I have to say about it. We hope you'll join us. Thank you. All right. So, if you like the show, I have to say this. Please comment below. Please. And follow it. That way, we can continue to bring you amazing guests like Adam Adams. And we've got a really cool schedule planned for the rest of the summer. Some really cool guests coming on. 
And I'm really just excited to be part of this community and these conversations. And we know you, like Lisa said at the outset, that you have choices with podcasts. There are 2.77 million podcasts out there now. That's a lot of podcasts. So if you chose us out of the 2.77 million, well, I am expressing my gratitude for that. So thank you. All right. See you on the other side. All right. Well, welcome to the show. We finally connected all mostly, I think, because of me on the last two cancellations. So thank you for your patience. Thank you. Appreciate you making it happen. Uh, No worries. So we thought it would be fun to just, because of your background, the reason we originally invited you on is selfishly, we wanted to learn how to promote our show more. Okay. So, I'm just joking. Shameless plug. <laughs> but I thought it would be, I was, fasc- I was fascinated by what you did. And we listened to a couple of your podcasts on sort of how you had your own podcast and then you launched this new business to help other podcasters grow their podcasts. And I thought it'd be fun to have a conversation when we were originally supposed to schedule because at the height of COVID, you know, everybody was launching a podcast. So I thought it might be fun to actually talk to a podcast expert on how to grow your podcast and just sort of hear your space around it. Cool. I'm happy to answer any questions with regard to podcasting. So we're with Adam Adams today. He runs growyourshow.com. And basically, in a nutshell, you help other podcasters, the nuts and bolts, the nitty gritty on how to grow, scale, promote, and do all things around your podcast for greater impact. A hundred percent. And are we recording? Because I didn't know. Yeah, we're, we're recording you, from the you, outset. Yeah. You, Wow. Okay. Perfect. Because we post produce this, so we'll cut things out. But I, okay. sometimes some of the best conversations happen when we're off camera. So <laughs> for whatever cool. reason, when the camera light goes on, people like to ham up. And I'm like, no way. It's the same <laughs> conversation as before. Just carry on. So everyone's going to know about your pain threshold now because yeah. it's already out there. It's true. Now they know. Oh, well. <laughs> Your pain threshold is my sweat threshold when when I'm not supposed to sweat. Like I play sports and I work out and I have really high tolerance around sweating and pain and that sort of stuff when I'm supposed to. But if I'm in a situation where I'm not supposed to sweat, I am the biggest baby on the planet. Like we'll be at Lisa's house and she wants to go out in the backyard and it's like humidity is so hot and like three seconds and I'm like, I have to get, take it. I can't take this anymore. But what about when you're exercising? Then are you happy to sweat? Yeah, no problem. That's what I'm saying. When I'm supposed to sweat, I'm chill. But when I'm not supposed to sweat, forget about it. Got it. Got it. And a hot a hot tub or, or a dry sauna or, or a steam room, that's you're happy with that too. Okay. Totally cool with it. But if I'm dressed up and I'm going to an event or having lunch in the backyard in, in a humid environment, forget about it. It's like, I'm the biggest baby ever. And you guys are on the East Coast, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What part of what part of the country? Are you in Florida or? Lisa's in Hilton. Hil- oh, sorry, Lee, go ahead. Yeah, I'm in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Okay, cool. Nice. And I, I'm in Charlotte. And then I go back and forth between Charlotte and Hilton Head. And where are you? You're in Colorado or the Midwest or something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, once upon a time, I lived in Jacksonville. And mm. uh, I felt what you feel when you're not supposed to sweat. Like you, you would walk. I'd take my kids to the park every morning. Um, because it got too hot in the middle of the day. But um, yeah, my legs would stick to my pants and it would just be horrible. But at the same time, I would go to the steam room for a couple of hours or maybe like an hour, hour and a half. And I actually love it. So Yeah, it's like when you're supposed to sweat, it's okay. But when you're not... It's not I get okay. it. Yeah. So you live in Colorado now, is that correct? Yeah, it's Conifer, Colorado. It's 8,300 feet versus the 5,280 that Denver is. So we're usually another 10, 15, 20 degrees cooler than Denver. I don't know where Conifer is, but I know I've heard of it. I was actually born in Colorado. I was born in Colorado Springs. Oh, nice. I and- was just doing a col- um, CrossFit competition in the Springs. Uh, that's so funny. I was just there last week with my kids. Oh, cool. So you're a CrossFit guy? Yes. I am. I, I belong to a CrossFit gym, but I wouldn't qualify myself as a CrossFit guy. <laughs> he belongs, but he doesn't really belong. It makes like almost no sense. You go, right? You use it. It's expensive to you. It's like 200 bucks a month, 150 a, at least. Yeah, they just raised it. It's 196 odd number a month. And I do go, but not as much as I should go. 
My only beef with it is I really haven't been accepted by the group. So it's sort of an outlier and I just sort of like do my own thing because I don't do the group workouts because I don't usually have an hour to devote in the morning because I'm a single dad and I got to get my kids to school and stuff. Got so it. I sort of do my own thing. But it's I don't know. And you've been shamed for it and ostracized. I kind of feel like I have You're off into your own corner. <laughs> I kind of feel that way. I'm sorry. Uh, you're oh making, I want to apologize for them. <laughs> I'm like, there is bad stuff about CrossFit. It does raise cortisol levels. It makes it harder to have testosterone and grow some muscle. And it uh, also, people push you and forget about some of the potential for injury. They just want one more rep. Um, I, I hope that's not the standard, but I've definitely injured my shoulder and my back in CrossFit, just uh, being a meathead, <laughs> just I, I, needing I saw, that last rep. I, I saw a couple. Of, I don't know how how long ago was this, Lisa? When I told you about the the woman who had the tire that fell on top of her. <laughs> oh my god! I'm not laughing and, and like at her expense, but like that's why I don't participate in the workouts. Like there's just people who don't know what they're doing, and she was trying to do a workout, and there's another guy like pushing the tire, and she's like this tiny little five foot girl and this big giant man and it's like i don't think the two of you should be in opposing juxtapositions on this tire like let her just be and sure enough bam the tire just lands on you did you see that yeah i saw it it's like (laughs) crazy so i stick to the pull-up rack at least you're looking like you have got to go do some tire of your own no (laughs) can you hear that now that i have yard people they're always doing my yard and they decided to do it right now. I can't hear anything. Oh, okay, okay, good. It sounds good. Because I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I well, let's, I have your people. Let's jump into these things around podcasts. So we're with Adam Adams. He's the CEO of Grow Your Show. Adam, thank you for joining us. How does one get two names of the same? Did your parents... Do you have another name? Did you change it to something? I know you've probably been asked this before, but... I'm yeah, sure. let's talk about your name too, Devo. I'll tell you my story. I was thinking about that today after <laughs> Devo texted me about making sure that I was still on for <laughs> for our call today. Um, I started thinking I've never met a Devo in my life, like ever. And how did he get that name? So yeah, maybe we could talk about that. Adam Adams. It's my real name. It, it wasn't technically my birth name. I was born on a polygamous colony. My mom was the sixth of six wives, and only the first wives' children get dad's last name. So um, it never was mentioned, but I was something like the 18th kid or 17th kid out of 20. I was at, I was at the very end there and uh, they were running out of names. So I was named Adam Abel. But when my mom left, she was like, this isn't the lifestyle I wanted. I don't really like this. Um, so I'm going to get out of here. And so... I was about four years old, coming up on five years old, about to go to school, about to go to uh, elementary for the first time. Kindergarten was coming up. And my mom asked me, because her maiden name is Adams, she just goes, would you be okay if your name was Adam Adams? And uh, I don't think I cussed, but I probably said something like, hell yeah, I (laughs) want that to be my name. That sounds awesome. Uh, and so from the time I was four, it was Adam Adams. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been helpful. People can remember it. It sticks in our, in our minds. And my initials are AAA, which is pretty epic as well. <laughs> AAA. I was actually thinking of that when you first said it. I'm like, he has AAA. There is his initials. That's cool. <laughs> okay. So you can't lead with that whole polygamous thing. That, that's I no a lot. longer participate. No, no, but I was I was Mormon, so everyone oh, okay. figured that you know I was only one of many wives that my ex husband had. So wow. hey, and, and where did you guys live? Uh, where did you guys live for that? Uh, originally in Canada, and then then um, just in Hilton Head. Yeah, yeah, we're all over the place. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm from Utah, and yeah. so I've got a lot of a lot of our family is is Mormon. Um, yeah. much fewer on my mom's side that are in the polygamous part. We just um, call them plagues. 
plagues. And, but on, the, on my dad's side, I'd say about half of them are still there. He was an apostle at the time of that sect. They call themselves Mormon, but a mainstream Mormonism, obviously, mm-hmm. as you probably know, but maybe the listener doesn't, um, where there's millions and millions of followers. Um, they, they don't subscribe to that. So my, I think it was that my, my grandpa, I don't think he's, uh, actually, um, I don't think that he was angry or racist in like, a uh, these people are meaner or any, uh, these people are any, any derogatory thing, but he was told growing up in the mo- mainstream Mormon church that blacks would never have the priesthood. He was, he was told this is like a clear thing. It'll never happen. Uh, God has marked them. And the day that they, that the mainstream Mormon church like started saying, now everybody can have the priesthood, it threw him for a loop, I think, because he was brainwashed growing up from his dad and from his religion. He's like, I, this isn't what I was told is the, going to be the right way. So he ended up leaving and, um, and kind of th- that's how my parents got into it is, is through my grandpa wanting to be like as good as possible. So I, even though that might not sound like it makes sense to some people. So are you now, in, since you've exited the, the group, are you now in hiding in Conifer? Colorado? <laughs> I'm not in hiding. I'm not in hiding. And they know where I am. They so, frequently uh, come after me. So, um, so you grew up in, in a polygamous uh, childhood. Lisa grew up in a Mormon adulthood. And I didn't have either of those, but I was brainwashed. I'm one of 12 in my dad's mm. own private cult. So <laughs> our podcast should be centered around <laughs> yeah. brainwashing, polyamory, and cults. Around shadow work that we all need to do. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, I'm one of 12. We're all makeup sex babies. And um, yeah, so there's a lot of different conversations we could have around that space. So we should probably talk about podcasting now. How do we even... How, how it back. Is, yeah, <laughs> but that would be an interesting conversation. So let's... I agree with you, Lisa. So podcasting give us a little back history on sort of because you're sort of a pioneer in the podcasting realm you were doing this before it was the cool kids on the block were doing podcasting and so how did you first jump into the podcasting space why did you do it give us a little history on that if you don't mind i think i'm more of a follower as far as podcasting goes than a pioneer um i ventured out and and tried something but i wasn't one of the first I started in, we started with the idea um, in 2016. It launched in 2017. And there were, I have a few friends that were podcasting about 10 years before that. So I don't feel like a pioneer, but I I feel like I I jumped in before a lot of the 2020 people did. Mm-hmm. And I think that's already, what I mean by that. You know, had a lot of success, and yeah. um, so short on how that got started, it was 2016, and I was new to Denver. I had moved from Jacksonville, Florida, where my pants were sticking to my legs because I didn't want to be hot all the time, and it I had to sweat sometimes when you, right when you walk out the door. Uh, so we moved from Florida to. Um, to Colorado and Denver Lakewood area at the time. Now I'm up in the mountains. But I, I was thinking to myself, I, I kept hearing, your network is your net worth. I don't know if you guys have heard that before, but it, it was pretty much um, a tattoo, going back to tattoos, uh, on my brain. Your network is your net worth. And so I'm thinking to myself, I'm brand new. We just moved here. I don't know anybody. So I'm screwed. I'm going to make this much money. It, it was a donut. And um, so I s- thought to myself, how will I grow a network? And meet up and podcasting came to mind. I had only had an iPhone for about a year. So I, ha- I was new into podcasting, but I loved learning. I loved um, how fast and easy it was to be able to jump on there. 
And as far as meetup, I was trying to go to other people's meetups, to be honest. I was like, I don't want to have all the work and effort and put myself out there and maybe have nobody show up. Like that would feel bad. So I was just wanting to go to other people's meetups, but they were just at the wrong time. So I started both of these around the same time. One technically launched in 16, the other in 17. Um, but I ended up having some success. And we might get to this on the call today. Um, I found three pillars for influence. And one of them is your social media pl- presence. One of them is meeting people in person. And the last one is your thought leadership platform. And so my meetup was meeting people in person. It was a way to connect with humans face-to-face and grow um, more uh, credibility, yes, but really the trust much, much more quickly. Um, The podcast was my thought leadership platform. I, I didn't have a book. I'm writing one now, finally. But I didn't have a book or any other type of thought leadership platform. Um, and I thought maybe I could do podcast. And the social media is another one I think a lot of people are afraid of. But I, I tried to figure out how do I how do I make the most of my podcast? How do my, I make the most of social media? And how do I make the most of this um, meetup? And it was remarkable. And I'm really proud of it because was able to get the meetup in such a place where meetup headquarters flew me in and I got to speak at a conference that they hosted with their just their top organizers. So I was recognized as one of the top six meetup organizers in the world out of like 225,000. Mm-hmm. And my podcast had grown into the top 1% in a very quick time. My first podcast, my my new one is also there or above. But um, I tried to... I, I tried to dissect like at the time I didn't know exactly why I was getting all of this um, success through these things. And um, speaking of tattoos again, I have one tattoo and it basically is three symbols: says persistence, determination, omnipotence. It comes from a a, a saying by I'm trying to remember who uh, Calvin Coolidge, I think it was persistence and determination are omnipotent. Like they will make you have all of the success. And I thought to myself, it can't just be that. Like I somehow got lucky. Yes, I was persistent. Yes, I was uh, I was consistent. I was determined. I was marketing these things. I was doing them in a, as much as I could. But what exactly was it that got my meet up to where I was world recognized and my podcast as well in top 1% in the world. What what was your first podcast about? It was called Creative Real Estate. It was, uh, it helped people buy real estate even if they didn't have money. Uh, That's how I got started with real estate investing in 2005. Uh, Well, I technically spent like a hundred bucks on my first investment, but it, it paid me back twelve thousand dollars, and my second investment, I spent forty two thousand and and made like three hundred thousand. And I just kept um, doing all of these like creative deals with other people's money, and and I had so many friends that said to my to me, like, I wish I could do what you do, but I don't have any money. And I'm like, dude. I didn't have money when I got started. It, don't let that be an excuse. So I started that podcast, um, which I later sold because it wasn't getting the avatar that I truly wanted. I made a total mistake and I was attracting poor people intentionally. The creative real estate podcast. Here's how you can do business if you're as poor as hell. And uh, and I, I was doing good wor- for the world, right? That would, felt good, but... My company at the time, I still have that company. We, we have a few hundred like apartment units that we rent out to other people. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a company that buys properties with other people's money. And for that, you need other people's money. For that, you need rich people, not poor people. And so like, I realized much too late that I made that mistake. But going back, um, started the meetup, started the podcast almost at the same time. And they blew up 
And I started asking myself, it can't just be because of persistence and determination. I think, I think that it's p- obvious nobody will be successful if they're not persistent and determined. Um, but there was some other thing that happened. So I started trying to figure out algorithms, podcast algorithms. When I was at Meetup HQ um, in Manhattan, um, uh, in New York City, at the very sixth floor of Meetup headquarters, is where all of the engineers are. So I'm sitting here like asking them, what did I do? How did I do it? Why me? Why was I the speaker? And I was doing those same things with my social media. Like, how am I getting uh, hundreds of of comments instead of tens of comments? What what am I doing differently? And same thing with my podcast. And so long story short, I started helping people with podcasts in 2017, like six months into my journey. And they were getting a lot more success than I was getting because they were starting it off right and triggering these algorithms early. And as we went through, and I was a part of a few different mastermind groups that are awesome. Anyone listening, pay to be a part of some mastermind group. It doesn't matter which one it is. Uh, You're going to get value, I'm sure. Uh, So I was part of a few different mastermind groups. And one of my uh, coaches kept saying to my to me, Adam, you've got to make this a business. But my real estate stuff was so good, like we, I was basically retired in my thirties. I didn't have to work. I was making enough money every quarter on our quarterly distributions to be fine. And um, and so I thought, why would I? Why would I need to like help people for money? But he kept saying, do it, do it, do it. And I finally started it at the end of 2019. And in short, we've helped tons and tons of people. We have about 60 clients right now, 30 staff, uh, 30 people on the on the team helping about 60 clients. We're crushing it. We're I'm having so much fun. Uh, but if you go to 2020, w- at the beginning of the pandemic, we stopped all distributions. <laughs> Uh, so I was no, I was so glad that I actually had barely started in July of nineteen, charging for the podcast stuff because that kept me uh, afloat in the year twenty twenty that I I probably would have made absolutely zero income. But there's a, there's a little bit of info. Hmm. What a journey! So you're still doing. So you were were you going to share some of the algorithms, or is that a paid service that people have to? What was it you figured out? Um, are you asking if we'll share the algorithms on this call? Well, you, you, yeah. Is that something that someone has to pay for? I don't want yeah, to no, I'm happy to. We can't serve everyone in the world. So I would love to just share any, any of those algorithms just so people can kind of utilize them. Um, in some cases, it's easier for them to trigger the algorithms with our help, but I will still share like anything that I learned with podcasting. Um, one of the things is that the first eight weeks can be really critical. So there are um, Apple Podcasts, for example, the podcast platforms have have a way to figure out if your podcast is doing okay on its own or not. And if your podcast is really getting some traction, even without their help, then they start to ask themselves, the algorithm gets triggered and they start to ask themselves, if they ought to be putting it in front of their people. So sometimes the algorithm will trigger just enough that they will listen to it. Sometimes the algorithm will trigger enough where it'll automatically get put into other in front of other listeners. That's like getting on the new and noteworthy category, for example. Um, so we've, we've been able to help a lot of people who, who do that. And so the algorithm is traction within the first eight weeks. That's the first algorithm to discuss. But the way to control traction is through marketing. Um, when, when my team helps other podcasters launch a show in the very beginning stages, we'll do a whole bunch of paid advertising. We'll do Facebook ads. We'll do um, banner ads. We'll do YouTube ads, LinkedIn, Facebook ads. We'll, put it, we'll basically just try to do everything we can to put their podcast in front of the most amount of people. Um, non-organically, paid ads. Um, And at the same time, we talk to our clients about what they can be doing to trigger the algorithms on their own. 
So we'll be doing paid ads. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I go back to the paid advertising? What type of budgets are you recommending for people in that sort of space? Yeah. um, Our our packages for, for, um, for advertising... The top one has a one thousand dollar a month budget for the ad spend. Mind you, we've also got to pay the creative. Yeah. We also got to pay the guy to manage it. But yeah. the ad spend budget is a thousand a month, or about thirty bucks a day. And for the middle package, the ad spend budget is about ten bucks a day, or three hundred bucks a month. Um, that's where we start with Facebook ads, and then we'll put small amounts of money to different places. Um, we might do a campaign where it's a month here or a month there for the first couple of months during the launch. Um, but Facebook ads are pretty consistent throughout the whole journey of our clients. We know how to control them a little bit easier. We're able to get the cl- cost per click down. Um, but we, we, we're we at about a thousand bucks a month. And as far as connecting with other people that have your email list. This is another great way to do it, especially when you're launching. It You would reach out to somebody who didn't have a podcast, but their their same follower was you, the f- follower that you want on your show. And so, for example, I call it, you have the same avatar. Now uh, You have the same um, c- perfect client. And what we'll do for them is we'll pay them whatever amount of money that it, they that they say it's going to cost, and we we try to keep it under a couple thousand if we can. But it's some people have big lists or they're really greedy with their list. I'm not trying to offend them, but they they uh, they really want to protect that list. Um, so we'll pay them to put out six shoutouts for your show. So. And, and sorry, and who are these yeah, people? These are our own internal distribution, or these are people that you've targeted uh, exclusively. These are people that you could find that have your avatar. The same listener avatar for your show Got it. is their reader avatar for their email subscribers. Got it. Got it. Their email subscribers already trust them, and we just say, we just say, hey, can I give you? I'll give you a thousand bucks. We might try to start there. I'll give you a thousand bucks if all you do is shout out my podcast six times to your list. Why six times? Because it takes generally six to 13 times to see a message for us to start trusting it and actually take advantage. So we want to have it at least that six times. So, uh, hey, I'll pay you to put this in front of your list uh, six times. And so your service, sorry, I'm going to interject with questions um, just to be time sensitive. So your service manages this for your clients. Yep. A hundred percent. Exactly. That's what we do. Um, But these ideas are still beneficial for anyone if they wanted to do it on their own. Um, Try to try to get some other algorithms because the first eight weeks, that's some stuff. But we're talking about the paid things and then the I want to talk about the organic things that we generally pour into our clients and ask them to do. Mm -hmm. Um, We will ask them to do a couple... Jeff Walker's got a great book about launching. It's like a launch formula. I don't remember the exact title of the book, but it it basically... He talks about the pre-pre-pre-launch and everything you got to do way before you ever launch a product or a service or a podcast or whatever it is. Um, It hit with... The pre-launch, I have my clients send out three different emails. I mean, sorry, we're talking about emails. And then I um, three different Facebook posts or any other social media post. Whereas one of their posts will be about the the title of their show. So for example, let's just say that the show, my my show is the podcast on podcasting. Um, so that's what I named my show, but in what I could have done in the beginning is I could have said to my followers on like all of my social media platforms and did like a little poll where I'm asking them questions. When you ask questions, it's harder for your follower to not engage when you're telling they, they just scroll past Mm -hmm. when you're asking, you kind of get this hook where it, it stops the scroll. It, it's a pattern interrupt. It makes the person stop to think 
and uh, and look at your uh, posts a little bit. So you ask things for like opinions. Human beings are notorious for not being able to keep their opinions to themselves. So you you say something like, um, "Hey hey guys, I really need your help." All right, that is that's asking instead of telling. That's a hook. That's a pattern interrupt. I really need your help. And now they're now they're incite. We incite some curiosity. What does he need my help with? I can help. Let me do it. You know, and and so then you go into the story. So it's hook, story, offer for each of these three posts. Hook, then story, then offer. Um, the hook is the question. Hey, I need your help. Um, the story is what's going on. Launching my podcast, and I can't figure out the right name for my show. I want to help people that are brand new at podcasting. And here's three ideas that I came up with. I could call it Podcasting 101. I could call it The Adam Adams Show. Or I could call it The Podcast on Podcasting. What do you guys think? Question mark. What do you guys think? Question mark. That's the offer. That's the, that's the, that's the third piece from the hook story offer. So you hook them, you tell them what you want, and then you, you ask them to take action on something. With me, taking them to, having them to take action means I want them to add more engagement on my post because when they stop the scroll, that is the first social media algorithm that they will trigger to get the most amount of earballs or eyeballs on my podcast. When they start engaging on that social media post, we're going to trigger additional algorithms within social media that are going to have the Facebook say, holy shit, I get money when people stay on Facebook. This guy's <clears throat> post right here is keeping people on Facebook. They're all engaging. They're, st they're all stopping the scroll. They're all commenting. It's keeping Adam on. I'm going to put more ads in front of Adam and his friends. So I make money and my investors are happy because of this post. I split tested it against some other shitty post and I'm going to keep putting more weight toward this one because my goal is to keep people on social. So I'm getting them to engage and then I'm engaging with their engagement to add to it. So they might say, I like the podcast on podcasting. And then I, and then I come back and say, that's my favorite too. Is there any changes that you would have to that? Question mark. So it's, it's like... Uh, connecting with them and asking another question and turning one comment or basically zero comments, but turning that comment into, you know, two or three or four or five or six back and forth comments, which adds to the social proofing of other human beings who see that post. Even when they wouldn't have commented, they see that 5,000 people have said that they liked this one, but they don't like that one. They like the other one. So they've got to be heard and they got to share mm -hmm. it. And so they say, I like the Adam Adams show. And then I go back in. That's actually the one that I wanted, but no one else is saying that. Do you mind if I ask you what made you determine the Adam Adams show? Question mark. And then they go through it. The point of all of these social algorithms is beneficial because that these are the posts. I have my, my people, my, my clients, send out one post about the name of their podcast using that the the exactly the way we just talked about. The second one might talk a little bit about the artwork. So we we submit when you're a client of ours, we'll already give you four different artwork options. Uh, but if you're doing it on your own, just go to like um, one Fiverr or something like that and get four different people for let's say 15, 20, 30 bucks each to create a little uh, podcast, a logo, we call it a artwork. And then you post that. You put a little A, a B, a C, and a D on top of each one. And then you do another post. Guys, that was so helpful when you shared, uh, when you sh helped me figure out the name of the podcast. With your feedback, I've selected the top one, but I still need a little bit of help. I submitted to Fiverr or Adam Adams, my company from Grow Your Show, did this thing for me. Well, I've got these four logos um, that I'm going between. Are, which one would you prefer? And if you think two of them need to have a baby, what would that be? Let me know in the comments.
That's your offer, hook and then story and then offer is, let me know in the comments. So now you're getting a whole bunch of traction. This is beneficial for the pre-launch of your show, kind of like Jeff Walker might teach in his book. I think it might be called the pre-launch formula or something like that. But um, So let me... Yeah, go ahead. Is all of this only applicable to the pre-show, the, the first eight weeks? Or do, are you saying that these same practices are still worthwhile once the show has been up and running? For example, we've been up and running for a bit now. We're not in our first eight weeks. And while we do have a presence on it, if we were to utilize some of these practices, it would it still be effective? It won't be as effective, but it will absolutely be effective. Um, the... <sighs> What we're talking about for these clients right now, sending out these posts, these are pre-launch. This is to stir it up before it ever launches to get people feeling like they're part of your show, part of your journey. Um, they're going to share it. Uh, you're going to get tons of uh, traction. You'll By doing the hook story offer formula on social media and stopping the scroll pattern interrupt uh, with different images, questions, those kinds of things, um, maybe blatant, like um, uh, a lot of times when you draw your line in the sand and you say like podcasting is the worst, that's not a question, but you're drawing the, a line in the sand. You're stating an opinion where you're on a different side and people are going to wonder, what is he talking about? I thought he, I thought he helped podcasters and now he says that they were worse. So that could be a, those are hooks. If you still use those, you'll still get benefit for your show. What I think a lot of people in your case that they might have a hundred episodes or more. They've been doing it for months and months or years and years. They're always telling on social media instead of asking. They're always like, just had another good episode. And then they put the link to the podcast. Well, there is two bad things here. Just had another good episode. There's a first and foremost, you're just telling somebody something instead of asking them. Yeah. Secondly, um, nothing has changed. So human psychology, oh, another good one. Okay, it's just another good one. There's nothing, you haven't said anything about this episode that is unique or differentiates yourself from other podcasts. It's not a different opinion. It's not, it's not a contrary opinion. It's, 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 and it also doesn't say anything about W I I F M what's in it for me. Yeah. It just says another great podcast. So that's the first problem is there's no hook. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, what's the word urgency. If, if something like with meetup groups, for example, if if they say we meet every month, we just have a monthly meeting, I might say, oh, I should go to one of those one day. But if if they say on this date in this time, you're going to get this value, don't miss out, get your uh, child care scheduled today so you can't so you don't miss out, and I get that type of a message. I'm like, oh man, that one is unique. That one's different. I, I might miss the other 11 for the year, but this one I'm not going to miss. And so it's just in the messaging, where to, when we just say it's another great episode, it's boring. There's no, there's no urgency. But when we say, you know, Adam Adams dropped some massive bombs. If you want to know how to market and grow a, a meetup or a podcast or your business, you can't miss this episode. Is that your shameless plug you want us to write? I like it. I like maybe, it. There's a lot of urgency maybe. there. Uh, I have a, uh, let me, can I switch gears for a second? Yeah. I have a question for you for something we're doing, if I may selfishly ask. Yeah. So Lisa and I are, are launching our first ever retreat workshop, and it's a series of workshops, and, and they're in different cities. So the, it's called Photography House, okay. and it's a four day workshop. And this is my shameless plug. It's a four day. Yeah. Hold on. See, I'm already stressed because we didn't start with all this pre-launch stuff. We should have started ages ago. So there's nothing we can do about that now. Yeah. So it's a four day workshop, Adam. And on the website, we have the other cities that are forthcoming, but they're not physically, the dates haven't been announced yet. 
in your opinion, based upon what you just shared with me, would it make more sense to pull those cities off and just leave the city Savannah, which is the first one, June, July 11th? And mm. this is sort of a scarcity model. You can only register for this workshop, Charlotte, Asheville, Charleston, Folly Beach. While they're still coming, we're not going to show those because someone might say, hey, I can't make Savannah, but I could definitely make Folly. Like, do you follow where I'm going with this question? Yeah. I absolutely follow. And I'm I'm not sure of the right answer. Um, I know a lot of people that do it the each way, both ways. So I I feel strongly that in general you should normally put all of your eggs in your next basket. It, it's the one that's coming up. We sh- Generally, we should have our own horse blinders on. We should tell everybody that they, sh- they, they got to make this one. Um, that's what's going to be probably the most effective. Mm-hmm. That's, where, that's what I was hearing you say. Um, But at the same time, I think sometimes as a user, I can be happy that I will see where they're going to go. Because it honestly, for me, if I saw that they were coming to Denver, Colorado, and that's like 45 minutes from here, then I would probably not fly to LA next week. I would wait six months and just go to Denver. Sort of like a concert tour. Yeah, yeah. So so I don't know if I personally want to go to all of your photography retreats. I'm not sure if going to all of them is beneficial or not. Uh, It is. It is. (laughs) Okay. My assumption was, okay, they're going to teach A, B, C, and D, and that we're going to go through it and practice aperture and some other random photography things words that I've probably never heard of. Um, and if I went to the, another one, it, it wouldn't, it, I would get the same thing. Is that not true? Oh, no, it is not oh, true no. at all. So, so each workshop is tailored for very specific. It's not just photography. In fact, it's not photography education per se at all. It is workshops centered around live photo shoots with live models but also with the focal point of business branding and marketing workshops throughout the four days mixed in by other coaches, other experts, Lisa and I, of course. And so the idea is sort of stolen from reality TV concept where we're taking eight photographers, eight business people, eight entrepreneurs, locking them into a home for four days, all inclusive. And it's filled with the bevy of business, branding, photography, education, connect and mastermind, etc. And okay, each one so- will offer something unique. Everyone's going to be unique and it's always going to be eight people. Right now it's eight photographers because what we want to avoid is if you've ever been to a photography workshop, there's like a hundred photographers vying for the same model shoot or everyone's vying for space. And so we want this to be an incubator. We want this to be very intimate and a lot of one-on-one time with other people so that everyone is getting something out of it as opposed to just like trying to vie for time. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, that's a different thing. Sorry, Man, I wasn't if, to, to me, I as a user, I am happy when I see that you're going to come to my city. It will help me gear up uh, for it. Uh, and I'll probably be the type of person who's more likely to go to the local one when I can. So I already travel a lot for my business as it is and for fun. Uh, so it's like, oh, I, I don't have to do it. I could just like go down here. That might be a benefit for me, but I think honestly, if I was in your position, I would probably put all of my eggs in the very next one. And I might have on the thing uh, a list of other possible ones that you may or may not hit sometime in the future, but you don't know when. You know, you might have that, but not like, don't make me feel like it's going to happen yeah. in Denver in the next four weeks because then I will definitely not go to the one, the next one that's happening. Um, and 
going back to that part where we're talking about how each one needs to be unique, when you when you discuss it, like and even now and and later, you should definitely talk about what are the reasons why I can't miss out on this one. It is it a certain model that's going to be there? Is there a certain connection? Um, is there a certain like um, magazine that is going to be part of this mastermind that's going to be presenting at this mastermind that they might be able to sell their photos to? It 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 goes going back to my meetup stuff. If I was uh, if I was trying to get a lot of people to attend, I would do um, 10x type of marketing, like organic, you know, phone calls. I would call people individually, and I would always, you know, sell out every single time. It would always be over full. Um, and the way that I would do it is, I would think to myself, this was a real estate thing, so I, I still do real estate now, but not as much. Um, I would reach out to somebody who maybe wanted to do fix and flips, for example. And I would, I would have a presenter that was teaching something called scope of work, where you basically create everything that needs to happen on a fix and flip. And, and then I'll, I'll make sure that this guy, he had, been, he had done like 300 fix and flips. And so I'll, now I'll reach out to people that have done like 100 or less fix and flips. And I'll let them know that this guy's got this scope of work that he's been perfecting. And he started really learning after 100 fix and flips, because that's what he told me. After 100, that's when he started to learn and hone this in. And it's gotten the most progress over the last 200. So then I call somebody who's done like 100. And I'll say, you know, this guy's n never lost money. They uh, This and this. And I'll give all of the things. They say, that's why you've got to make it. Next Thursday, I don't care if you got your kids or don't have your kids, get, get a babysitter. This is worth potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars to your bottom line this year. You have to be there because I really genuinely felt like it would benefit them. Mm. Then I would call as many people that were a hundred or less fix and flips and I would say the same thing. And then I would call all <laughs> the people that were about to get into fix and flipping. And then I would let them know, this is the guy speaking. These are the 20 people that I already know who are coming, who have been doing fix and flips for years themselves, and they still want to learn from him. You would have the opportunity to network with all of those people. You've still not done your first fix and flip. You're going to have an opportunity to learn from this guy, meet all of these people. If you ever decide to wholesale a deal to one of them, you got a lot of actual buyers who actually do fix and flips and actually have the money. Additionally, you'll be able to network them. You'll be able to connect with them. You might be able to have their phone numbers if you ever get into a bind. You've got to be there. Mm. And then I call all my wholesalers who are people that are kind of like agents who buy a, who like lock up a property. Maybe they don't even own it technically, but they'll put it under contract and then they'll sell their contract to a fix and flipper. And I'll call all them and I'll say, this is a, a one, this is the one that you can't miss this year. Then I call all my real estate agents. These are the people that are coming. And if you really want buyers, if you really want to be connected with those kind of time of people, this is where you're going to find them. And I've got, also got a whole bunch of wholesalers who lock things under contract. You make money and they make money and the fix and flipper makes money. So you want to be there. So get a bunch of them. Then I call lenders that lend money. I call private lenders who, um, who don't have a crazy amount of money. They don't have a lot of capital, but what they do have is maybe 30 grand. And that could help uh, a wholesaler or a fix and flipper. And I, so then I say, these guys are serious. I know you don't have a ton of money, but I will introduce you to a couple of these people that I trust. And you can determine if you want to be able to place money with them have a velocity of your capital moving so you can invest maybe 10, 20, 30 grand at a time until you have 40, 50, 60,000. And I'll, I'll keep calling uh, insurance people until everybody knows this is the one not to miss. It's kind of like your photo sh photograph um, workshops that are live, you know, eight people um, getting into a place. If you had a speaker or a presenter from a magazine 
or from uh, that would give them the exposure or give them the money that they were looking for. And you could also can just mention to them, this is somebody who I want to introduce you to. You would be there staying at the same place with him for eight days with just seven other people. It'd be a great opportunity for you. Yeah. So I like the message I heard you say is you're doing a lot of canvassing around that, a lot of creative marketing around that, a lot of one-to-one building relationships with people around that. And you're building sort of a scarcity model around it so that people feel inclined to get part of it now. Yeah, hundred percent. Like if it's it's more yes, there's scarcity and there's urgency. I, I put the most amount of focus on urgency. Um, but scarcity is is critically important. These human psychology, uh, they these help with with making somebody make a decision. Yeah. We always want that thing. I wanted to go to the event, man, but work was a little busy. I was a little stressed out. My kids were sick. So, so like I would have rather been at that event clearly, but because of these other urgent things that kind of came up, I made the decision to cancel last minute. But when we have them start to create that scarcity and urgency in their own minds from their kid or their job. I don't mean that in a bad way. Sure. Uh, but but by by having them make the decision up front that this is important enough that your anything kid's not going to love you if you don't come to this photography house workshop. <laughs> no, but I understand the stacking of priorities and we need that. Sometimes we need that push, don't we? Yeah. And and if we do, then then we're there and we're always glad we did. Mm-hmm. Same thing with my kids. I'm like, we ha- we're going hiking. And they're like, I just want to stay home. But when you finally get out and you do the thing, like uh, I, I did a 14er the other day. I've got COVID right now, which is, I don't have a stuffy nose or a cough anymore, but uh, still testing positive. Uh, but I just went um, on this 14er and I kept making excuses because it was like 12 degrees. I wasn't dressed for it. it. I was losing oxygen and I had COVID. And so already having a hard time with oxygen. And everything like told me I should just turn around. My, my feet were wet. My, they were soaked. And I made it to the top. And when I came down, like I felt incredible. Like I was on a high in so many levels. Just proud of myself. Just amazing. It was starting to warm up. And it was like 40 degrees instead of 12 degrees at closer to the bottom. And I was so glad that I pushed through any one of these people that go to your photography thing, they don't see, they might not see all of the benefit right now. They might not understand it. They might not know how to make a decision. If you can help them with some more urgency to to just make that decision, but you're going to make more money, you're going to make more connections, you're going to meet some models that so you can get a portfolio, you'll have your own portfolio after this one weekend or whatever it could be. Um, if they can just make that decision, I know that when they get come home, they'll be like, best money I ever spent by far. I, I'm so glad I spent the time and money with these people. I learned this much, I got these connections and I'm going to make more money because of it. We just recorded that as our first live testimony. Yes, thank you. (laughs) But I can see how you've taken that mindset from business and understanding all of that and applied it to to your current business with promoting podcasts because it's a little overwhelming as a creative thinking that, okay, I've done this, but there's all this other promotion that I need to do. And as you kind of named off all the things, it's like, okay, that was obvious, but I never would have thought of doing it that way. So to have a team behind you thinking of all the other applications and the things that you should be touching that as a podcaster, you're, you're just not, you're just not there yet. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, We didn't get quite as far as I thought we would get. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to, we, all of the organic stuff there, I've only touched the service and this is only for pre-launch things. There's a lot more we can do be, be doing. Um, so just in general, you can utilize social media the way we, we've kind of learned on this episode. It's hook story offer formula. It's ask, don't tell. You know, stop the scroll. 
say the thing you want to say and then call the person to action. Um, we missed one thing and it was what most people are doing for their post. Do you remember when we were talking about how I mentioned they're all saying I had another great episode and it's there's just no urgency or scarcity or uniqueness at all? Um, additionally, did you remember we mentioned that they put the link to the podcast? This is a negative algorithm. This is this is horrible when you put the links in our posts. And some people say, well, you can get around that by putting it in the comments. I'm gonna I want to debunk both things on in the in the next two minutes. But um number one, if you you're thinking to yourself, well, how will they know what my podcast is? I want to make sure they go to the right podcast. I don't want them to miss it. If I put it right there in front of them, it's easy. And so they're going to click it. But first and foremost, um, Apple, I mean, uh, Facebook and these other social media platforms understand that they would need people on the platform. That's why we talked about stop the scroll being an algorithm and and uh, engagement being an algorithm. The other one is outside links, taking yeah. me to a podcast platform or your YouTube channel where I can now go get stuck watching cat videos. Yeah. Or staying in your podcast forever. <clears throat> so what they what they have done, what Facebook and others have done, is saying, "All right, they put an outside link. We automatically um, shadow ban this. We automatically don't show it to people. When before they showed it to a few, and if you engaged and stopped the scroll, they show it to more. Now it's got a link, so it's an algorithm that they have got triggered that says." All right, we are not able to show this because it keeps people away from our investors making money. Um, and so that's what a lot of people do. And then they've heard, well, I heard that if I don't put it into the post, but I, I then later put it into the comment section, that I won't trigger that algorithm. That's actually true. But if they don't have to engage on the post, and they just scroll down a little bit and then they click to go away. They're not engaging. You're not getting the value. And you're thinking, but it's so much easier on me. I, why would I want to say to 300 people the same link? Uh, why would I want to privately do that? Uh, instead, I could just put it in the comments and they could just get it there. But, okay, 300 people are not going to see it because once the first two people go there and leave immediately, now we're triggering a different algorithm that's going to make it so that your uh, your posts aren't going to be seen, which means that they won't know that you even have one, which is the exact reason why somebody listening, and maybe you too, I, I'm not sure, somebody listening who has a podcast and does that wonders, why do I only get one or two likes or comments on these? Why does it never go farther? It's because the only people that will ever see that is the people that go to your page and then start scrolling because Facebook and the other social media platforms have already shadow banned it, have already bl blanked it out because they split tested it against somebody else's better performing. Mm. And now you're, you're the one who's getting uh, squashed. So what about putting it in the profile link? Same thing. If I so how do you how do you I get think the profile the link is a fine thing, but when we're talking about social media and getting traction, I'm really, really talking about hard work. This is why my team does a lot of this hard work for our clients, because it it is hard. It is it takes a lot of effort. But I recommend not putting it there either. I recommend saying something like, uh, I'm not even sure if I'm going to do this. That's your hook. Mm -hmm. Do what? Do what? What is he talking about? <laughs> not even sure if I'm going to do this. But um, Lisa and I really want to have a retreat where we would have these types of people come. Uh, we would do these types of things. And our people would get these types of algorithm out outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, 
But before before we make any announcement like that, can you let let me know in the comment if that would even be something you'd be interested in? That's your offer. So we got hook, we got story, we got offer. Let me know if that's even something that you guys would be interested in. Now you get one or two people saying, I would do that. Ooh, that sounds fun. Ooh, I want to, I've always wanted to meet that person. I've always wanted to learn those parts. Um, I, I've always wanted to have a business that could, a, a photography business that could actually pay for my stuff. So like my husband's not going to be mad at me anymore because I'm only freelancing every, once a month. But this is going to teach me how to have a, a system that's going to make me happy, make me feel better about myself make my husband get off my back, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to do this thing. So it's hook story offer. Then they're commenting. And when, when people say something like, uh, when, instead of you saying oh, maybe your next post, we decided to do it. We decided to host that event. It's going to be at this place and this time. Instead of doing that, chill a little bit. Think about you're at a bar and you're courting somebody. You don't go up and say, look, I'm handsome as hell. I got this degree, this degree, this degree. Why wouldn't you marry me? <laughs> we, don't, we don't do that. And we do, we probably there are some that do. <laughs> yeah, I, before. I was married to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love that. But what generally feels more comfortable which is, is why they're not getting the likes on their approach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what generally feels more comfortable is, is I've decided to do it. Anyone who's interested in this photography retreat where we do these things, where this is your outcome, you got to get, got to paint that outcome. It's cl so important. But anybody who's interested, let me know and I'll shoot you a link so you can register. And now you got people who are like, well, I'd be interested, but what are the dates? They're commenting. And then other people would be like, I'd be interested, but how much is it? Well, I'd be interested, but I don't know where it's going to be. Well, now, you, now you've got no problem, man. I will, I'll, I'll send you a, a DM with some more of the information if you're interested, question mark. And so now they have to do another comment. Yeah, man, I am interested. I do want to see it. All right, I'm going to send that to you right now. Let me know when you get it, question mark, in the comments still. And then you go DM them the, the stuff instead of putting it on your per personal. Now you're triggering another, another algorithm, which is the people that you private message on the social ma media platforms trigger an algorithm that they're more likely to see your stuff. And th so th they're basically being split tested. We've used that term a few times. Um, on social media, then they're saying, all right, people like this are, are having long conversations with Devo. So I'm going to put more people like that in front of Devo because they'll keep each other on Facebook. That's really the, all they're saying is we want to make more money. So we, we gotta, we've got to do what we need to do. So, um, That's so brilliant you, stuff. Thank you for sharing. Oh my that. gosh. Tricking the algorithm. What a hack. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's a big part of how the meetup and the podcast grew at the level is what I did on social. And that's why I always call it the three pillars of influence. You know, meeting people in person, um, social media presence, partly because everybody today, well, not everybody, but a good 95% of people today, and you two are probably included, and I am as well. I'm guilty. When we are doing our due diligence on somebody, we will search for them. We'll do a Google search. We'll look for them on Facebook, on LinkedIn. We'll find out what we can about them, find out what they're into, what's their personality, um, if they got tattoos or not. You know, We'll figure this stuff out so we can understand if, if they're a CrossFitter just like us. Or if they're a poser like Devo. I'm <laughs> just kidding, man. I agree. I am a poser. <laughs> um, so, so this is how we vet people, though. We vet people through social media. And so for anyone who has zero social media presence, but they want to be a good photographer, or uh, they want to make a lot of money, they want a lot of listeners on their Facebook, they want a lot of people to come to their meetup group, it's going to be challenging 
if people don't know who you are. So on your social, that's what you do there. And you can trigger these algorithms to grow it even faster. And then on podcasting, we talked about a few of the algorithms. Um, I, I will just say the more traction that you are getting, especially in the first eight weeks, but the more traction that you're getting organically um, or by our efforts or by paid ads, um, you're going to be more likely to have the podcast platform start to promote you, which is truly what you want. We want to do some hard work up front so that uh, later on, the, so the um, podcast platform will be the one promoting us. It will be found when people look up our, our genre because we have more listeners, more ratings and reviews than other people in our genre. So when you start, and we don't have much time left, we're probably going to have to bring you back on. Actually, we'll, we do need to bring you back on. When you start with a new client um, that's enlisting your services for podcast, do you do a high-level audit initially just to sort of understand what they've done, context, what could be improved upon? That way you sort of have a precedent or you just sort of jump in with the service? For most of our clients, the audit is important. Um, we are doing that a lot. Um, sometimes I, I real know that I don't need it on this one. Um, but generally speaking, it's, it's a normal thing. And I like to think of it as like any type of asset that they have, like what's their email list like, what's their social like, what, uh, how many clients do they have? Um, where are they in all of these different places? What have they done before? What are they comfortable with? And just like my my trainer, I, I'm, I finally have my six pack today. Like today's the first day that I can, can comfortably say the whole six pack. I used to have two and then four, and now it's it's six and the sides. But uh, this guy, he took my blood in the beginning, right? He he tr- he tr- had me track my food. I was eating like twelve thousand calories a day. No wonder I didn't have a six pack. It was ten times what I'm eating now. Uh, but he did this audit. He figured out where I am and where I'm starting from. And that's what we do with our clients. We figure out how can I support you with what you already got, with your skills, with your email list, with your social media following. Where Starting with where you are now, how can I uh, tweak it just a little bit? Like my my physical, my trainer, my coach, he didn't have he's not having me s- completely stay away from some foods cuz he saw that I was always eating them and even though he doesn't necessarily eat them is like all right he can still have this and f- and and be happy and have it a little bit easier for him to to get to this six pack um and that's kind of what we do with our clients we just try to figure out where are they and what are the small things that we need to change or not well, that's a lot of brilliant stuff you dropped. A lot of stuff, food for thought. Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate being on the show, guys. Thank yeah, you. I'd like to do it again, actually. There's a lot of different pieces that I wrote down that we could break down and dissect if it's something you're ever interested in doing. Yeah, I'm more than happy to. Awesome. I, I love the way that you strategize and look at things and leave no stone unturned. And that applies to every single business. Like This isn't just podcasting. This is literally every single business owner could take that mindset and use that to just propel themselves forward. It's brilliant. I agree. I agree. It, it, it helped me in a lot of ways. It helped the social, it helped the, the meetup and, but my business, um, I can, I can't, couldn't be more grateful where, where the business is today. And I think it comes from this stuff. So you're right. So this is Adam Adams. He's the CEO of Grow Your Show. And if you want to find Adam, it's www.growyourshow.com. I have that on the screen below. And then What's your preferred social media channel of choice you would like people to go? You want to shout that out? Yeah. I'll, um, the podcast on podcasting is a free way for them to check us out without going to the website. And they could listen to it wherever they're listening to this. But um, social media, I, I'm really only active on Facebook. And I will give you guys the link to it. Um, it's Adam, AAA Adams. But... Um, what I will say is if anybody is going to try to friend me, <clears throat> please send a private message with it. Like actually uh, message me 
because um, I've I've basically just been ignoring everybody. I don't know that person. I don't know that person. Never saw them. But if you sent it with a private message, hey, I heard you on on this podcast and and that was great. Wanted to connect. Boom. I'll, I'll definitely add you. That's great. Thank you. Lisa, any closing thoughts? No, it's just I'm a little overwhelmed right now at the all the um, strategies that I had never really considered. And we consider ourselves to be pretty pretty uh, succinct with social media. And when you start talking about the links and all of that, it was like, that really makes sense. Okay, mm-hmm. why didn't I see that before? So thank you for um, opening our eyes to a lot of things and uh, giving us uh, a new new way to be motivated. I had a, had a good time with you guys talking about polygamy and everything <laughs> else that we spoke about. <laughs> yes, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Only you and I will get that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get it too because I've seen the Broadway on Mormon. What was it called that we went to see? Oh, yeah. Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon. Yeah. Charlotte. So I get that too. That's rad. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, that's a, that's, uh, I haven't been Don't exclude it, me. I already get Everybody it who's been there has really enjoyed it. I'm yeah, not. You, you, we get more of an brother. insider's laugh when, when we watch it. When I, when I come to the Carolinas, we will CrossFit together. Dude, I would love that. Just don't push a tire on top of me. I <laughs> will try not. I would. I'll tell you what. I don't know if I'll cross it with you, but I will hike with you. I love hiking. I'm nice. always out, I'm always out and about. In fact, just literally basically every weekend I find some place when I'm not working. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. And Are you a mountain biker? Around here. I am. I, well, I, have, I have a mountain bike and I ride. I wouldn't call myself a mountain biker, but I do regularly ride. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll bring the bike. So cool. That would be great. I, 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 I will take you up on that offer for real. Uh, Please, really you're good closing. Connecting you guys, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry, say that again. Adam. I was just saying it was really good connecting with you on the show. Yeah, it's it's longer than we've ever talked, and and it was <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, well, you Thank were you. dropping knowledge. And I'm you sure, were. as um, you know, as you uh, talk to your clients, you'd say never do a show this long, and we just did. So <laughs> I won't. I actually you. wouldn't say that. No, <laughs> no, we gotta say this. I'm sorry if we're a little over. Check it. <gasps> There is no evidence, and I've looked for it, uh, that the length of a podcast changes its value. I completely five agree minutes, with you. Yes. totally fine. Three hours, totally fine. There is two main considerations: one, entertainment. I agree. And the other one, education. If someone's getting value out of it, and it's through the whole thing, it's a good podcast, even if it's three or four hours. If um, if it's entertaining, it's a good podcast. If they don't get either of those things, it's five minutes long. It's a shit podcast. Yeah. So and and to, and to add to both Lisa's closing thoughts on what you just said, the beauty of a podcast is I mostly listen when I'm in the car driving somewhere, and I, and I can always just pick up where I right where I left off because it just pauses right where I am. So that's the beauty of it. I completely agree with you. And um, Adam just left. He just dropped more knowledge for us. So thank you. Bam. And and, <laughs> and Lisa, to your thought, um, in terms of you know whether we are or we aren't, um, you're obviously social media proficient, but I, I have a lot to learn. I think for me, and I would like to close with this, Adam, is that um, I really love what you said at the outset of the podcast. It's sort of connecting. And that's why we first launched this podcast because we were trying to find a way to meet a larger population of people who were more critically minded and pursuing things that, that were in our wheelhouse. And so this podcast has been that vessel for me. And I, I don't know, you know, we have a business coach that told us that we need to niche down on our podcast. And this is a separate conversation, I think. Maybe we can take it offline. We, we haven't really niched down on one modality for a podcast. We're social media, we're content, we're branding. We're really connecting is what we're doing with this podcast. And I don't know if that's right or wrong. But for me, the, the, the food, the fodder the, and the connections that I have made through doing podcasting and the lessons that I've learned from every single guest that have come on have made me a smarter person a more connected person. And for me, that's why we're podcasting. That's why we do it. It's just sort of that connecting, collaborating and creating with people. And and that's, that's my niching down, if you will. So okay. your show today was, was no, was nothing different from that. I, I mean, you dropped knowledge for an hour and hour and 14 minutes. So thank you. I really appreciate <laughs> your time. Appreciate you guys. Yeah.